Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, so thank you for the positive responses on my first video. So moving on now, I thought that based off some of the comments that I received, that the second video I would do would be covering some aspects of logical puzzles. So with syllogisms, we saw that there was essentially one synchronous technique that we could use for pretty much any syllogism question. However, for, however, for logical puzzles, it works slightly differently, as there are many different styles of questions. But one of the most common questions are these what I call two or three variable questions, where there's four people, and they may be from four different countries, and let's say they wear four different hats, that kind of logic, the ones where people are assigned different items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the best method, the best method that I found to be able to go through these, and how you can answer them as efficiently and quickly as possible. So let's talk a little bit about it and then we can go into some questions similar to last time where I'll walk you through it. So firstly, it's really important to create what I call a two-way table. Okay, so this will make sense when I go into doing the walkthrough, but the idea is that you put one main variable down the middle. Okay, this isn't necessarily always the names. That's what's important to think about. Normally people always put down like the names or the main variable, but that's not necessarily how it is. The main variable is decided by which variable is mentioned most in the question. So we will talk about this and we will come to this in a bit. The second idea with, with having some kind of table is that it allows you to extract all the relevant information. And I'll teach you some of the ways in which you can go beyond the information that you already know. So often people get these questions wrong because they don't realize the extent of all the information that you actually are able to extract from this. Thirdly, it's really important to read the actual question. So people often like to do logical puzzles, but it's important to note sometimes you don't necessarily need to complete logical puzzle to get the answer. And that brings me on to my fourth point, that if you read the question and the question says, what possession does X person have or what hat does Y person have? You know, it means that you might not necessarily always need to complete the logical puzzle all the way to the end. And especially with the UCAT, they're trying to find ways to trick you and make you waste your time. So it's really, really important to read the question so you know what you're heading towards. OK, so having got that out the way, I think the most important thing for us to do is walk through some questions together. So let's have a look at this first question. So. Four people, HIJK, are a doctor, manager, teacher, and lecturer, not necessarily in that order. They each own a different type of vehicle. So H is a doctor, J owns a sports car, K owns an electric car, the person who owns a motorbike is not the teacher, the manager polishes a scooter every weekend. Which one of the following must be true? So you can see we're looking for either the teacher or the manager. Just as a quick tip, when they normally say which one of the following must be true, normally you have to try and complete the question as best as possible. So if you look at the options here, I would say that the names are potentially mentioned the most. Okay, H, J, K, the person. Okay, so I think I'm going to put the names down the middle. And actually with this question, it doesn't matter too much what you put down the middle um, because the I think you can put any pretty much anything and the other variables will fit in place. So I talked about having this kind of two-way table um, and the necessity of need again. So all, all you basically do is you put the one set of variables on one side. Oh. So doctor, manager, teacher, lecturer. And then on the other side, you're going to put the cars. So sports car, electric car, motorbike, and scooter. So let's work our way through this information. H is a doctor. So what we do is, since H is a doctor, it means no one else can be the doctor. And it means H can't have any of the other jobs. J owns a sports car. So if J owns a sports car, that means the sports car can't be owned by anyone else. And J can't have any of the other cars. K owns an electric car. So the electric car is not owned by anyone else. And K can't have any of the other cars. I think you guys are getting the idea here. The person who owns a motorbike is not the teacher. So now we come to something that's a little bit difficult because it doesn't mention HIJK. So it says the person who owns a motorbike is not the teacher. So what do we do with this information? Well, the best way to present it, I find, is to draw an arrow over the top. And since it says is not, we put an X through it. And so hopefully later on, um, when we come to do this question, and hopefully maybe we find out who has the motorbike or who is the teacher is, we can, we'll be able to rule out the other the other criteria. So if you find out who the teacher is, we know that that person won't have the motorbike. And if you find out who has the motorbike, we know that that person won't be the teacher. Okay. The manager polishes a scooter every weekend. So if you guys can guess what this is going to look like, you can have an arrow over the top. So the manager polishes a scooter every weekend. Okay. So if you have a look here, we know that H is not the manager. Okay. See the sex here. So therefore, we can conclude that H also must not have the scooter, okay? 
And so therefore you can see a gap opens up. And so with this technique, what we're looking for is not only looking to put crosses in, but we're looking for gaps. And so you can see, I must have the scooter because that's the only gap that's present because the scooter can't be owned by H, J or K. So therefore it must be I. And since we know the manager has the scooter, I must be the manager and we've got our answer and we can move on. We don't have to do anything else. Obviously, like I said, one of the ways in which they like to trick you, make you waste time is make you complete it. So obviously you can do a little bit more information here. So you can figure out H is the motorbike and therefore you could have said H is not the teacher and you could have put some more crosses here as well. And unfortunately, this is as far as we can get. But once again, the important idea is that we don't necessarily need to do all of that. OK, so this kind of two way table method is going to be extremely, extremely useful because it allows you to picture and visualize the information a lot more easily. OK. So let's move on to our next question. Question two. So if you guys would like to have a go, see if you can perhaps create your own table and fill in this information. And once again, remember, read the question. So if you'd like to pause it now and have a go yourself and then unpause it when you're done and I will go through it. OK, so let's have a look at the main information here. So Kane did not spend the highest amount, but spent time more with Nicole. Nancy didn't participate in jet skiing, but her activity cost less than Sandra's. Nicole opted for snorkeling. Kane did not select sea walk as his beach activity. Who paid $75 for their activity? So I think the names are mentioned the most again. So I'm going to put the names down the middle. And I can put the amounts of money that their activities cost on one side and their actual activities on the other side. So I guess part of this um, of this method is you have to get everything down, which can often take some time, but it's not necessarily a massive amount of time because I think you'll often save a lot of time in the long run. OK, so Kane didn't spend the highest amount on his activity. And remember, we're looking for who paid 75 for their activity. So Kane didn't spend the highest amount. So we know he didn't spend 75 but he spent 10 more than Nicole. So looking at the options, the only way to Kane could have spent 10 more than Nicole without spending the highest must be if he spent 40 and Nicole spent 30. Okay, and then we just tick and cross like last time. Okay, Nancy didn't participate in jet skiing, but her activity cost less than Sandra's. So Nancy's must be 65, Sandra's must be 75, and therefore we've got our answer, which is D, Sandra. So you can see, you didn't actually even need to use the last line to get to this question, okay? And that's really, really important. And I think that one of the things which is which is really, really going to help is, like I said, reading the question first so you don't fall into the trap of unnecessarily doing too much, okay? So you can see this method can work very well and it just allows you to be able to fill in more of the information and extract more of it, okay? So let's go to a harder version. OK, so this is the third question. Once again, if you guys would like to have a go at this, it's the hardest of the lot. And then we can talk through it afterwards. OK, so let's have a look at the passage. So Sean was born before David. Henry was not born in August or November. Henry didn't eat the kiwi flavoured cake that was served at his best friend's birthday. Sean bought a chocolate cake for his friend's birthday, which is celebrated in November. John's birthday was first and he bought his own birthday cake from Bakery A. And it was either pineapple or strawberry cake. So I think... In terms of, once again, I think we're going to put the names down the middle. So David, Henry, John and Sean. Birthdays are Feb, May, August and November. And the cakes are kiwi, chocolate, pineapple and strawberry. OK, so let's go through it. Sean was born before David. So here a lot of people think, oh, I can't really do much of this information. I'm just going to move on and I can talk about Henry not being in August or November. But this is what I mean about the extraction. So Sean was born before David. And remember, they're all born in the same year. If Sean was born before David, he can't have been born last. Does that make sense? Think about it. If they're all in the same year and Sean is born before David, Sean can't be the person who was born last. So he can't have been born in November. And vice versa, if Sean was born before David, David can't have been born first. OK, so do you see how we've extracted those additional pieces of information? Henry wasn't born in August or November. Henry didn't eat the kiwi flavoured cake that was served at his best friend's birthday. So here, if Henry didn't eat the kiwi flavoured cake served at his best friend's birthday, that means Henry's birthday wasn't kiwi. OK, Sean bought a chocolate cake for his friend's birthday. So once again, Sean's cake birthday therefore wasn't chocolate. But bought a chocolate cake for his friend's birthday, which is celebrated in November. So you can draw an arrow over the top. 
Okay, and so it basically means that whatever the chocolate, wh whoever had the chocolate cake is in November, and you can see Henry did was not born in November, so therefore Henry can't have had the chocolate cake. Does that make sense? So every single time we're trying to extract as much information as possible. John's birthday was first. Okay, so finally we've got a tick on the board. So John's birthday was first. And with that tick, you can see lots of gaps, gaps opening up. So let's fill that in. So that means that Henry must have been born in May. Sean must have been born in August. And David must have been born in November. With David being born in November, remember the arrow over the top, the chocolate, the, the person who had the chocolate cake was whoever was born in November. So David must be the person in November who had the chocolate cake. Um, and let's keep going. So remember, we we're looking for whose birthday cake flavour can be definitively, definitely be identified. So John's birthday was first and he bought his own birthday cake and it was either pineapple or strawberry. So John's cake was either pineapple or strawberry, meaning it wasn't kiwi. And you can see we've got three X's in a row there. So Sean's was kiwi. And this is as far as we can get. So whose birthday cake flavour can definitely be identified? It's going to be Sean and David. OK, so it's a difficult question, especially if you didn't manage to get some of those extractions. You may be left with too many blanks. But you can see how at every point, all we're trying to do is eke out every last piece of information. OK, and just one last point that I want to raise in regards to logical puzzles, and this goes across all of, um, you know, all the different um, subtests and topics is you have to think about which kind of questions are going to be beneficial for you. Logical puzzles often do take time, even, you know, I, I know that this isn't all logical puzzle questions, but this is a, a good majority of them. And even with this method, they can still take time because they can be very tricky. OK, so therefore you kind of have to ask yourself, is it worth me spending a minute and a half, two minutes on this question when I may only get it right. And even then, if I do get it right, only get one mark. It may be more kind of time effective to spend your time on syllogisms or interpreting information, both of which are two mark questions. So me personally, the strategy that I employ is that on my first run through of decision making. So uh, what that basically means is that the, the, on my first run through, those are going to be the questions that I'm very happy to do and the ones I know I can do fast. I normally leave out the logical puzzles because I know that they will take me time. and I know that I could get stuck on them and that they're simply just not as cost effective as some of the other options, such as syllogisms and interpreting information. OK, so I hope that clears things up in regards to this style of logical puzzle questions. Um, in my next video, I will talk about um, a different style of logical puzzle questions and how to um, kind of go over those. So we'll talk about the shapes um, and we'll talk about the best way to tackle those logical puzzle questions. OK, but thank you very much for watching. And as always, um, make sure to comment anything else that you'd like me to go over in particular, if there's any specific areas. Um, if you'd like to watch me do any live questions, a live mock, whatever it might be, I'm more than happy to do that. I'm happy to live stream it as well. So people know that I'm not essentially faking it. Um, and yeah, um, thank you very much for listening. And uh, let me know if you have any uh, direct problems or inquiries and I'll do my best to reply to all comments.